Hey, I'm here in our office and with Kuji from Disperse, Kuji, uh, or KC, right? Yeah, uh, KC. We call it's it KC. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us a bit about how you built Disperse and how you grew. I mean, it's three years, right? Just, yeah, three just a couple years. of years, but you've scaled it. You're in multiple countries. Correct. Um, it's quite an amazing journey of how this organization has scaled to such an extent. Tell us your secret sauce or your secret behind the success. So, Roshan, it was not easy. Let me put it no, that Nothing way. is easy, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Especially when you look at a geography like India, uh, where we started off. So, more than being a product sale, if you ask me, it was a concept sale that we were trying to do. And when we went into the market, we realized that uh, the market doesn't understand uh, uh, how L&D can have an impact on the business. So, we classified uh, the entire journey that every person understands in three axes. Okay. Uh, do they understand the impact of learning on business? Okay. Do they understand how L&D can exploit technology to get the scale they want? And three, do they understand the people issues? So, you know, we took these three dimensions and we started creating solutions across these three dimensions and then we took it to the market. So, first have clarity of the kind of directions and solutions that you're providing sure. and then start to build solutions for those things. Correct, correct. But isn't that a complex piece? It is, it is. So we started with a simple piece. So if you look at India today uh, and if you look at millennials, today uh, 40 to 50 percent of our workforce is millennials and it's projected in the next 10, 20 years it's going to be 70 percent. Millennials work in a very, very different fashion. They like sh uh, short information, they have a very short attention span. And there is an interesting data point which talked about uh, they change two jobs every three years. So this is a different kind of challenge we face. So you know, this challenge also became like an opportunity for us. So the first kind of uh, workforce that we went after was gig economy. Okay. Today if you look at India, passes are being delivered at home, food is being delivered at home. So we saw that as an opportunity. And a Google article recently talked about 90% uh, of the technology solutions are going in the desk worker. In the deskless workforce, there is only 10%. And, and the deskless workforce is huge, right? Huge. A couple of billion, right? 2.7 billion, 2 .7 billion people. Billion, yep. Large workforce, no technology penetration, has a different kind of a challenge and has a different kind of outlook on how they want to learn. So, while this was a challenge, it actually became an opportunity. And today, if you look at it, we work with some of the largest organization that has a deskless workers. Mm. And now people have started recognizing us that we can create solutions for this market. Just to give an example, we work with one of the largest insurance company in India. as a workforce of about 150,000 users. And uh, the churn rate is between 8 to 10 percent on month on basis. So just think about the challenge they face. Yep. All the onboarding happens digitally today. Wow, this is amazing. And, and if you think, you know, if you look at the speed that you've grown, you know, in terms of how, how did you get that speed element embedded, you know, to grow so fast? Because I, I can understand, you know, let's churn it out into simple steps. Let's focus on the big opportunity area and zoom in because the, the, I guess there'll be less competition to some extent. So it gives you a bit like Walmart, you know, go to the rural areas and, and grow. But the speed in terms of how you did it in such a short period, how, what was the secret behind that? So, you know, I go and tell my customers that uh, you should imbibe learning agility. Uh, but as an organization, uh, we bring, uh, agility is extremely important for us. So today we are an organization of 70 people spread across almost five different countries. And uh, one of the things we are fearless about is to take a solution in the market. And we tell our people it's okay to fail. It's absolutely okay to fail because there's going to be some learning. So in the journey of two or three years, I think the first thing we did is we ensured we bring agility into the picture. Two, we were never fearful of failing. And all the learnings that were there, we got it back into our solutions and that's what gave us attraction. Mm. Okay, that, I think it's very interesting that agility was one, but I think that psychologically safe environment for your employees to fail and, and, and yes. bounce back, yes. it's critical because I think not many people tolerate failure and, and really say, they, they say it, but generally to create a psychologically safe environment so people can thrive, so that speed can be enhanced. Correct. So I'll give you an example, you know, if you come to our office in Mumbai or Chennai, uh, we give a lot of power to our employees. So, you know, if an employee comes back and says, you know, this particular group is asking for a lot of discounts, I say, I'm not the decision maker. You are the decision maker. You go ahead, close the deal. 
and if I don't get involved, that will give me happiness. Yeah. So we are actually giving a lot of power to our employees. And actually, within my organization, I actually had uh, a girl who was 26 years of age. We moved her to US. I said, you handle the US market. I have Bikram standing here, who's 26, 27. We're moving him to Malaysia to head this geography. So we're giving a lot of power in these young guys, and they are absolutely fearful, fearless in mm -hmm. making decisions. And that's I what think I, like. I think they start with being fearful, and then they become fearless. <laughs> But, 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 but I, I think this is a very interesting point now because I, I think many times leaders, right, and I learned this a couple of times over the last few years, is that the less decision a leader makes, the better the organization. Absolutely. The deeper the yes, yes can be said, yes. you know, the better the organization Otherwise, is. Otherwise, you know, Roshan, if you have to make every decision absolutely. in your business, you're, you're the bottleneck. You're yeah. a bottleneck absolutely. and you should be fired first then. Absolutely, you know, absolutely. You should never, so I always believe, you know, if the business can grow without me, I'll be the most happiest person yeah. in the organization. Kujit, thanks so much for Thank your you time. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you so All much. All the best Russia. here in Malaysia. Thank you so much, Roshan.